Um, so our next uh, speaker is uh, Dmitry Trovimov, and his talk is Python Debugger Uncovered. Um, Dmitry is a uh, uh, developer of the PyCharm IDE. Uh, Dmitry. Hi, my name is Dmitry. Uh, today I will speak about Python Debugger. Uh, first, I'll introduce myself and this talk. Uh, I work for JetBrains, and the last four years I developed PyCharm, and debugger is uh, among the other things that I do. And uh, often when I uh, say people that I develop uh, a Python debugger, they say, wow, that's kind of hard or complex. But I'd like to show you in this talk that developing a Python debugger is quite an easy task. It's, uh, there is no rocket science here. But in the first place, why do we need debuggers actually? As uh, Brian Kernighan wrote in his book, debugging is twice as hard as writing the code in the first place. Therefore, if you write the code as cleverly as possible, you are by definition not smart enough to debug it. And what we do normally, we always, or often, but I think rather always, write our code as cleverly as possible, and as a result, we have bugs that spoil our code, and uh, then we need to find those bugs and we have problems. The only thing that can actually save us uh, is good debug tool. And we'll look how to implement one. So there are a lot of Python debuggers, by, but I uh, roughly divide them into big groups. The first one, Python debuggers that are implemented in Python itself. And uh, those are PDB, PyCharm debugger, and PyDev debugger. Actually, PyCharm debugger is uh, a fork of PyDev debugger. It was forked four years ago, and uh, it gained a lot of new features. And now we're in, in a very strange situation when uh, we develop uh, this PyCharm debugger separately, and uh, Fabio, the maintainer of PyDev, develops it separ separately, and we exchange the fixes and backport features. But we, we now we're now in this, some kind of process to uh, stop the situation, but I'll tell about it in the end of my presentation. So, uh, Python debuggers implemented in Python. The most advantage of the, such debuggers uh, that they are platform independent. They can run in, on CPython, on Jiton, on PyPy, on Iron Python. That's why that is because uh, they're written in pure Python. But the problem with these debuggers is that they can be broken by user code because they run the same Python interpreter. You can just write something like uh, clear uh, sys modules and debugger will evaporate from the memory and uh, it won't work anymore. Uh, the second group of debuggers are those that are implemented in C. And, uh, the main uh, debuggers are WinPDB and Vink. They work only for CPython, but they don't interfere with user code, so they work better for such cases like uh, debug of Gvent or twisted code, but uh, that is actually not a problem for Python debuggers written in Python because all those cases can be solved, but you need to, to make something for that. So, how to implement Python debugger? Uh, actually, uh, many languages uh, provide developers of debuggers uh, some kind of API to develop debugger. And Python is a bit different in this case. It, uh, it provides only one function to develop debugger. This function is called sysSetTrace. And if we look into the Python documentation, we see that you can set trace function and it will be called every time you get any event uh, in the uh, Python interpreter. And the event can be a call of function, uh, execution of a line, or return from a function, or exception, or if you use some uh, uh, kind of C bindings, uh, then it can be called the C function and return from the C function or a C exception. So uh, when we want to implement our debugger and we see this uh, documentation and we realize that this is the only one function that we can use. We can get a bit scary uh, because it's very, it's very primitive and we feel cons very constrained. But as we know, constraint uh, breeds creativity. 
So as I show you, uh, because of that fact that we are constrained a lot, we can implement a lot more features than actually uh, ex exist in normal languages like Java and, and C++ and so on. So, uh, trace function. How can we use it? Here we implement a simple trace function. That is a function with uh, three arguments. The first one is frame. That actually is uh, the top of our call stack. Uh, this is the context which has uh, local variables the event we, that we get, and some args. Args are, depend on the event. And we print just uh, which event we get and on which line we get. The line that we can access from the frame. So we import our sys module, set trace, and then we have some uh, simple code. We iterate for within a range and print uh, the division of uh, some arithmetic expression. Let's look what we have. So uh, after we have set our trace function on the first line, that will be line number nine. Uh, uh, actually, it will be line number 13, but we have call uh, of the function that is uh, declared on the line number nine. We have a call. And then we have uh, execution uh, of a line number 10. Then we have execution of a line number 11. And uh, after that, we got uh, the first output. The iteration continues. We are again on the line number 10, on the line number 11, and we get again uh, our output. And on the third iteration, we have an exception. So uh, execution terminates. And you see that we have, in this uh, short program, we have all four uh, Python events that are possible. Call, line, exception, and return. So actually, that shows us that uh, developing debugger with uh, the help of a trace function is possible. So let's develop simple uh, console debugger. Uh, to test it, we use a sample program that is uh, simply uh, a red of ten sieve. That's uh, a function that uh, gets n as a parameter and prints all the primes between two and n. And here are our command line debugger. It's actually only 23 lines, and it works. Uh, I'll just tell you about how it is implemented and then I'll show it in work. It has two main parts. The first part is a trace function. Uh, as we've seen uh, before, uh, we, ha we get events and here, except uh, just printing uh, all the events, uh, we have a breakpoint. There is only one breakpoint. And if uh, the current execution equals to this breakpoint line, we do the simple thing. We just uh, read the input from console, and if and we uh, handle uh, commands from console. There are three possible commands. The first command is frame. If we get it, we just print all variables. The second command is C. It's for continue, inspired by GDB, and we continue to the to the next execution of the breakpoint, and any other string is just treated like uh, any expression that is evaluated. And the second part of this uh, simple debugger is the main part. We get here uh, from command line arguments uh, the line of the breakpoint, file to be debugged, and then we set our trace function as trace function and execute this file. So let's look how it works. So you see, we execute our simple debugger. We set uh, uh, our breakpoint at the line number six, and we pass rtothens.py as our sample program. So uh, debugger stopped somewhere, and we uh, type frame, and we see that we have uh, three variables. Uh, that's uh, our index, our multiple set, that is empty now. We continue. And uh, uh, we get two, that's our first prime. We print our frame. 
again, and we see that our index is three, and multiple set is all even numbers. So we can uh, continue, 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 and uh, uh, if we don't want to uh, read all this, this frame, we can, uh, no, that doesn't work, print multiples. We can print just the thing, things that we are interested in. So, voila, we have our simple console debugger just implemented in, in 23 lines of Python code. But this debugger is a bit not uh, full-fledged. It, it, it can be used, actually. It's not very convenient because we can set only one breakpoint and normally uh, we run our program and we need to place breakpoints uh, somehow interactively. And uh, actually here you can pass while true as an expression that will hang the whole process. And uh, it's not very convenient to read uh, our frames in a console view. We need some kind of tree for that or some kind of UI. So uh, thinking about that, we came to the idea that we need a visual debugger. And uh, if we need visual debugger, we need uh, some uh, multitasking. And for this, uh, we need some kind of architecture. And this architecture can look something like that. On the left, you see our debugger interface. And on the right, you see the Python process that is being debugged. They communicate between each other uh, within socket connection that allows us to run them on different machines and to allow remote debugging, for example. And our uh, debug interface sends breakpoints and commands to the Python process and gets back events, threads, frames, evaluated values. So, and, and the Python process uh, to handle this communication, we need two threads for reading, writing. We use threads here because we don't need actually performance uh, and GIL is not a problem for us, but we need uh, cross-platform uh, work we need to, this to work on Jiten and all versions of Python, so we just use threads and uh, it works good. And uh, here we have reader thread, writer thread, and uh, user thread. So, uh, if, we, if we talk about uh, communication, then we need to find uh, a protocol. The protocol for this communication will, will be quite simple. Every message is just a line and uh, separated by, by line separation. And uh, all the data inside this line is divided by tab separation. The first one is comment ID, the second one comment type, and uh, then we have uh, different arguments that depend on comment type. So comment types can be set breakpoint, resume, get thread, get frame, evaluate expression. And for example, for a message uh, get thread, uh, we, we, we generate some ID and the response uh, for that, it will, be, uh, it will have the same ID. And this will make us to know that this is a response for this very request. So this is very, very simple protocol, but it's very powerful actually. So we can get re uh, responses for our requests, or we can get not, but if we want to get responses, we can get exactly the same responses for this request that we want. So it's very simple and very powerful. So on, this, on the side of IDE, uh, we assume, we, we will not uh, go into IDE details, we'll uh, focus on the Python code, but we assume that IDE creates server socket for us, and it launches the script that is being debugged uh, with the command line, it passes uh, a socket uh, address and uh, uh, passes uh, the sample program as an argument to our debugger. So let's look how our code will, will be. Uh, it's quite simple also. The main code looks like that. Uh, we initiate our debugger, and first of all, we make a socket connection. 
socket connection is very simple. We create a socket and connect to it. It is already opened on the side of the ID. The next, we initialize our network communication. It's very simple. We just create, write a thread, and read a thread, and start them. How can be, how can look, uh, sorry. How can Luke read a thread? It just, in a cycle, until it is killed, it reads data from the socket and finds uh, line separation. If it finds line separation, it thinks that it gets uh, the wall message that can be parsed. Then we parse parse message just by splitting it uh, by tabs, which read the first first uh, element as ID of the command, the second as a type of the command, and we put this in our process queue. The writer is implemented by the same. So, what's next? The next is a bit more interesting. We run our program. To do that, first we trace our set, uh, we set our trace function, and then we wait for a command uh, from ID to start, because at this point, we need to be sure that all the data from ID has just arrived, that breakpoints are set, and uh, when we get a command from ID to start, we execute our file. And the most interesting part is our trace function. It's actually also very simple. We handle here uh, line events, we take uh, from the frame the line number and the file name, and we see if we have breakpoints for this file, if we have breakpoints uh, for this file, and uh, if we do have a breakpoint for this line, then we just send a, a message to our ID that we need to suspend, and we wait uh, in this point uh, in a cycle for resume message from ID. So execution is suspended here. We don't, don't execute commands anymore. We just wait for the message from ID to resume. And if we don't have breakpoints for this file, uh, we don't trace this context because uh, um, it will optimize a lot our tracing. So, uh, I can show you how it looks like. Font is a bit small, but I think it's okay. Here we have our rather tense uh, uh, sample program. And we debug it, and we just stopped. So that is, uh, it looks strange on this screen, I think. Okay, so actually that, that's it. We just implemented a visual debugger that communicates with the interface. But uh, we lack now very important features. The first one is conditional breakpoints. It's ability to, to set a... Let me close this. Uh, It's a demo effect, I don't know. I, I see this the first time. Uh, I, I can show, wait a second. Okay. So uh, we need to implement conditional breakpoints, exception breakpoints, step over, step into, smart step into. We need to make it work on Python uh, 2.4 to 3.4, and we uh, very like to implement multi-process debugging. And I'll show you now that it's also very, very, very simple. So how do we implement our conditional breakpoints? We just enhance our uh, trace function that uh, we see if we have any condition. Condition is just a Python expression that is related to true or false. 
we see if we have any condition expression, we evaluate it, and if uh, it is true, if it is false, we, we, don't, we don't stop on this breakpoint. So, voila, we have conditional breakpoints. Exception breakpoints. To, to trace exception breakpoints, uh, we need uh, to trace, uh, to handle somehow uh, exception event, and we do that very simple. We get our exception time from arguments, and we see if we have uh, exception breakpoint for this exception type. If we do have, we suspend. If we don't have, we don't suspend. So, step into, step over, smart step into, and run to line. These functions uh, are very simple. I, I'd like to show you uh, whether you... Maybe you don't know what is smart step into, I'll show you. Okay, now it's okay. So, step spy. Okay, so step into is just going inside the function that is executed. Step over is skipping uh, the execution of the function and going on the next line. And uh, smart step into is just uh, the possibility to step into to, of this selected function. And go to line is actually going to the specific line that you, you, you can uh, select in your editor. So how is it implemented? It's very simple. It's, it's uh, totally simple. Step into is just resume and stop on the next line. Step over is just step into, but we step on the next line in the same frame. We uh, remember uh, which frame was it when we received a step over message. Then we, uh, then execution uh, goes somewhere inside, and when we return to this very uh, stack frame, we uh, stop there. And smart step into uh, is just step into, but we stop on the line of the selected function. And run to line is just temporary breakpoint, which we remove after we reached it. So these four, four features are implemented just in, I don't know, in a couple of lines each. So what about support of Python.4 and, and all, all versions of Python and uh, all interpreters? How? Actually, that's not the best part of the code <laughs> because uh, when you need to support all versions, your code uh, very fast gains uh, lines like this. You need to handle all differences in standard library, but that's okay, actually. <laughs> you, you, can, you can collect it in only one file, and it will, we will not spoil the rest. So, multi-process debugger. That is the, the point that I like the most, because this feature shows us how uh, our constraints that we have in Python, only one uh, API function to implement debugger, allows us to make something, something better than in different languages. For example, you cannot debug multiple processes in Java easily, but Python, due to its, its uh, dynamic nature and due to the fact that we uh, implement all by hand, uh, allows us to do that. Uh, if we go to the Python standard library documentation again, we see that uh, all the all new processes in the end use uh, OS, the functions of the OS model like that exact where and spawn vents and there are a dozen maybe. First of all, the fork function is executed normally and then uh, some, some of the, of this function, one of these function. So what we can do in Python, we can just monkey patch them. 
and we do that this way. We uh, take uh, OS model function and replace it with our new exec function. And in our exec function, we call the original function with patched arguments. And the patching of arguments is very simple. If it is Python executed, we leave it and then add our debugger script in front of the real arguments and host and port that we already have. And what has happened in, in, in practice is that our new process that is about to launch, it first launched inside the debugger, debugger connects to the IDE, and then the debugger code executes uh, this uh, new process. So we have uh, debugging of the new process like debugging of the new thread, actually. Uh, what we have learned today, we just saw that uh, it's very simple to trace Python code, and it's very, very simple to make a simple console debugger. And also, it's very simple to implement a real visual debugger. But what for? I encourage you actually to contribute. Uh, there are a lot of features that can be implemented in this field. Uh, and they can be implemented by you or with your help. I don't say actually that we give up, <laughs> that we are uh, stopping to develop debugger, debuggers. We actually make a lot of work, but if you help to solve your daily problems, it will be great. And the sources where the, the best place to look are, the first one is uh, the link to debugger in PyCharm uh, open source repository, and the second one is the link to PyDev debugger, uh, in, on GitHub, but there is one moment that I'd like to tell about. Now there is a work in progress, there is a merged version of uh, PyCharm and PyDev debugger. Uh, the repository is already created, it's called uh, pydev.debugger. Uh, it has no code yet, <laughs> because the repository was created just uh, the last week, and it has some, some development branches. But stay tuned, um, in a uh, in short time, we get a merged version of PyDev uh, and PyCharm debugger with all the union of uh, different features we, that have both of the ID. And also documentation will be there, so it will be possible to con contribute to this project and to learn how it is all implemented. So that's all. If you have any questions, you can ask. I will start with a simple question. Is there a console client for your debugger agent, or are you aware of anything like that? Not yet, but uh, I think that after we establish this merged debugger with PyDev, we will make one. All right, that's great. Now for a harder one. Um, have you considered uh, data watch points, and how hard would those be in a garbage collector language? Uh, we uh, considered to implement that, but we has not, have not uh, evaluated the performance problems that it can, that which can be there. I think it, uh, it definitely worth uh, to try, but I cannot uh, say nothing uh, about uh, real production implementations of, of that feature. Is it possible for the debugger to uh, modify the flow of the program? Can I skip the execution of single lines or suppress exceptions? Uh, actually, uh, it's not possible in Python. Uh, it's, it's, it, is, it, is partly, uh, it is partly possible, so you can hack uh, bytecode that you get, but uh, it won't work uh, in all cases. As, as for suppressing, 
No, I think no that you, you cannot suppress uh, the exception that is raised and not caught. Uh, I have a question. So it's nice when you run your programs in development environment and you can run them with your debugger, but when you run programs in production, they are usually not instrumented, but they still fail sometimes, and you want to troubleshoot and debug them. So what's the current state of Python debugging for the uninstrumented processes? So that's actually the first one. <laughs> uh, stay tuned. Uh, I hope it will arrive soon. It's not yet there, but it's the, uh, it is the first on the list. Okay. Uh, any more questions from anyone? Okay. So uh, that'll be the end of the session then. So thank you, Dimitri. Thank you.